Wheel routes are very good against man coverage, but not a lot of people know how good they are against zone coverage in this look. As you'll see that this cornerback above me will man match, allowing this guy to get wide open outside once you bullet and pass it away from the cornerback for another easy catch and run one play touchdown. As he's just trying to beat him to the sideline, and then he just gets toasted upfield, and at that point it's just a sprint to the end zone. And this is probably the biggest glitch in the entire formation, as you can see this running back here never even gets recognized by the safety and coverage, and he just runs right past him for an easy one play touchdown right over the top. For the fastest, cheapest, and most reliable coins in the market with a no band guaranteed delivery, check out my coin sponsor, MOXP.com, and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniff of the Mad Cheese, as always. Got a brand new offense like I typically do on Fridays, but this one here is something that I really like. This might be my favorite new offense to use, and it's something that I just recently labbed. So I do plan on making uh, some content about this, some gameplays about this, but I really labbed this for my CFM, my 32 subscriber CFM, or CFM league that I just made a video about yesterday, which is why I'm also using my custom playbook, uh, which is something that I do have an ebook for if you guys are interested. All I have to do is click links in the description or the top pin comment. I do plan on using that more often now based on the fact that I'm, I'm in a league and we're all using custom playbooks. So I did put this full of what's probably my favorite offenses throughout the year. I mean, it's loaded with just about every offense that I've shown you guys throughout the year, as well as a lot that I have. I mean, I don't use a lot of bunch stuff, but I have a lot of really good bunch stuff in this playbook as well. But either way, the formation I'm going to show you guys today, though, is going to be the gun doubles Y flex. So I'm going to start off like I always do by showing you guys, um, you know, my favorite plays, how it's set up my audibles. But before I do, I just wanted to say that these plays, if you do play Mutt, can be found in these five particular playbooks that I have showing up on screen. I would say that the Patriots probably has the best version as far as having the majority of the plays that I'm going to show you today, or at least the most in one place. For the four plays in my audibles, I always have the inside zone because you need a run play, but they also have a quick base. So if you're more into that, running to the outside, I would say it's a very good substitution. For the pass plays, I always want to have the PA deep outs because this is a one-play touchdown against a lot of different defenses. Another play is also the shark halfback wheel, but I would have that as my fifth and main play as something that I come out in. You also have the PA read, once again, a one-play touchdown against a lot of stuff. And the last one would be the flood. But I'll also go over that more in my gameplay, with my fifth play being, like I said, the shark halfback wheel. But I'm going to start off with some run plays because there are a few good run plays and they don't take very long to go over. My favorite run play is probably the inside zone, but there's a couple of other alternate plays. So let's go and let's pick that. And before I get into this, as always, if you guys want to see more breakdowns, please make sure to be a subscriber, hit the like button, let me know in the comment section. It really helps out the video and the channel. As far as this particular play here, you don't really have to do anything, but I'm going to make this motion a lot where I motion this guy across. And doing that against zone coverages a lot of times can pull the linebacker in that area. Or like you can see now, since the cornerback didn't follow, I mean, I know I have a cover three, but it's a zone coverage and having an extra receiver blocking on this side is going to be a bit of a benefit. Now, I typically want to try to run this when there's not a linebacker in that gap, but this is something where I can still run it and have success. Inside zones aren't necessarily meant to be huge plays. They're just meant to keep your opponent honest, and you really need them to take advantage of things like, you know, if this linebacker follows the receiver out, or if there's not a linebacker in the hole, or if there's not a second level uh, defender, or if your opponent is in a really light box, you always need a run play to switch to. And you can see that this can still be very effective. I mean, I got a perfect block right there where, he, where that, I think it was the guard or the tackle just completely cleared the lane. So this is something you always want in your arsenals, but don't expect it to necessarily be a huge play. Here, though, you can see I made that motion. There's no reason to make that motion against man coverage because I'm bringing the defender with me. So against something like a Manzer Blitz, which is what this looks like, just run it as is, and you can see that you're going to have the most uh, success. So man coverage run as is, zone coverage motion that receiver across, and if you're not sure, you can always motion that guy back. If somebody follows, you can always motion the receiver back. Now, there are a few alternate run plays that are pretty good, like the quick base. This is more of an outside run, in my opinion. Now, when it comes to uh, man coverage, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to motion that guy across because he will bring someone with him. But he's going to run a fake route anyway, so a lot of times he will pull that cornerback back. So if you want to have him there, you can do that. But I don't find it necessarily helps. And you can see how, you know, you get a pulling block. This is kind of like a trap run. Uh, that was a blitz, so it's going to be a little bit more difficult to get outside. Here you can see, once again, no real 
uh, defender there. Can follow that that pulling block as my lead blocker and get a very big play. A lot of pro players really do prefer things like quick bases compared to uh, regular inside zones. You can see that is really effective because that linebacker got sucked in and then that guy came around and sealed that block, making it a very easy play. But what I'm getting at for me is that, to me, this is probably better to run to the outside more often than the inside zone. And I'm not really getting that opportunity yet. Now, here you can see I made that motion. It opens that lane once again. Now, I just have to follow this guy, although he kind of got in the way because I expect him to keep running. He kind of like turned back and looked for something because that receiver, once again, did get on that linebacker, meaning he really didn't have to. But you can see, against blitzes, you don't want to run these type of plays against blitzes. So anytime they're blitzing the linebackers, they have a better opportunity of cutting this play off. But against zone coverages or things where they're dropping back, where the linebacker's not in attack mode, that's, that guy's going to come around, he's going to pin that block, and he's going to make a much bigger play. But if those linebackers are coming downhill, they're going to they're gonna blow that, that hole up before you can before your guy can get there. So just, just keep that in mind. If somebody's blitzing the inside zone better, if somebody's not blitzing, if somebody's playing passive or playing zone, this is going to be a better run. And last but not least for the run plays, we got the read option. Most people will, will try to put on their option defense, but if somebody doesn't put on their option defense or it isn't really working, you do have this play as well where all you have to do is just watch the read defender and you can you know make your decision. If he if he stops like he did there and waits for the quarterback, you got to hold A and hand it off. But if he crashes on the handoff, you can get a very big uh, run to the outside. As you can see right here, this is a pretty good option defense because there was a secondary guy. But uh, a lot of times you won't have that, and you'll get a big run. I'm not going to run this too much, because like I said, the majority of online players will set their option defense anyway, and you'll you'll get into a situation where you're not really um, going to get this second link, because that's the big play. The, the, the quarterback is the big play. Most people will try to take that away. If you are running with the quarterback, though, just make sure to put your um, ball care on conservative or slide so you don't fumble more often, because quarterbacks will do that even on design runs. All right, so that's all we have for the run plays. We got through that pretty quick. I'm next going to do some of the dink and dunk pass plays, starting with the Y sales. This is probably one of my favorite to come out in. Now, the best way to run this play is to split the field in half. The two receivers on the left are very good uh, man beaters, and the two receivers on the right with the running back and the tight end are very good zone beaters. The B route there just pulls back coverage. So this year, I can't tell if it's a cover three or a cover one, but I'm going to guess it's a cover three, which means that the running back side is the better side, starting by staring at the running back. This running back here can get open underneath any zone coverage because that tight end will do a good job of basically uh, pulling back the zones so he can get open underneath for a good catch and run like I just got there for about 10 yards. So that'll steal all game that's one of the better things about this offense but if i'm wrong and it turns out to be a man coverage i can always go to the tight end like right here turns out to be a man coverage we got that tight end wide open although i probably should have safe caught that so that's your your bail out there the tight end will be man or zone you know what i mean it's like i'm starting if i think it's a zone i'm gonna start by staring at the running back but if halfway through the play i realize oh that's not a that's a man coverage he jumps down on the running back or whatever i always have that tight end and then like i said i always have the check downs on the other side which is going to be the um as i get a bad throw there is going to be the the man coverage is on the other side but the read structure for me on pretty much every single play running back first tight end second and then if that tight end's not there i'll also have the option to throw this guy here over the middle late so that's pretty much my three reads the zig is something that if i see man coverage a mile away i'm going to go to the man side i'll take the zig so it's hard to like go from 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 left to right you know what i mean like right here we got um i, I was staring at the zig you know what i mean it's like if i had to go from the running back where the tight end all the way over to the zig by the time i do that it's probably going to be a poor decision or you know i might put the ball in danger so that's the easiest way to run this and it's one of the best dink and dunks let's go let's move on now there is pretty much an identical play in the halfback slip screen which is also a good wrinkle so i'll go and i'll show that next so this play is pretty identical as far as the, the routes go obviously the running back is different this is really going to dictate what you can do as far as everything else as you can see right there the running back got kind of caught which can happen screen plays are pretty unpredictable sometimes linemen get caught sometimes the user can blow it up so if that happens if you can't get to the running back you at least have a couple of other options that get open pretty quickly like the zig more specifically the tight end that was a zone coverage and the zig still got open but i have more faith that the tight end is going to get open the most against man or zone as you can see right there i still have plenty of time to throw to that route uh, another play which is really uh kind of basic is going to be the z spot i'm gonna go ahead and pick that i'm gonna flip it because i'm gonna run to the hash mark the hash marks glitch is whenever you're on a hash mark like i am here to the short side of the field and if you have a corner route all you really need is a streak after that so i can either motion across the y receiver to give me that or i can motion out the running back to give me that but i'll make some adjustments because i don't really have a ton of man beaters here if i want to run this play 
the same way that I ran the last play, where I have uh, my, my zig and my in route, which are both good man beaters. And then on the other side, I'm going to use this like a zone concept by motioning out the running back and just putting him on a streak. This is probably the best way to have my, uh, you know, my play set up, where I have to the short side, I have that corner route, which if it's a man coverage, or sorry, not a man coverage, if it's a zone coverage, I can pretty much steal all game long. And then on the other side, I have my man beaters the same way. Now, that works against cover three, cover four, but it's also a little bit better against cover two. So let's go and let's pick that. And then on the other side, we're going to go ahead and we're going to pick Tampa two, as this can be a potential one play touchdown if you have a fast enough tight end. This isn't necessarily a one play touchdown, but it's definitely a big play worth showing. All I'm going to do is motion across the Y receiver and put him on a streak. Then I put the B receiver on a smoke. And if we have a cover two, obviously that B receiver is going to hold that cornerback down where the Y receiver is going to pull the safety back. And you can see how I can get a big play. I don't know if I'll get a one play touchdown, obviously, because there's not a lot of tight ends in the game that are fast enough, but it's still a big play worth showing. And then I have one more dink and dunk play in the slot cross, which I can do a lot of different things with. One of which is going to look a lot like something I put out from the Pistol Bunch TE, and it's also in the Single Back uh, TE, or the Single Back Bunch TE called the Cross Drag. So let's go ahead and let's pick that, though. I'm going to go back to the actual play. I don't want to confuse people and think that I'm switching formations. Let's go back to the doubles wide flex, and let's pick the slot cross. There's a couple different things you can do with this defense. A lot of these routes get open with the exception of the streak. You can just run it as is. I mean, you have a short, shallow crossing route, which can act like a double drags concept, and then you have the deeper one, which obviously can get act like another drag. But if you want to, you you can just straight up put him on a double drag or you can just motion this receiver across or even the running back and then put him on a drag as well and this is what i was talking about when i was saying it reminds me of the pistol uh, formation play or the single back formation play because this is exactly how that looks so now i have basically just a bunch of crossing routes but typically when i do this i like to actually put the a receiver on a streak just to have something to pull back the deep zones because that's what's going to help to get these other routes open so like i said i could throw it to whatever i want i can throw it to the underneath route on the drag or i can throw it to the to the deeper crosser and then I also have the option to the running back, which obviously is a check and release, which is really only going to be good against zone coverages. I don't, that was a man coverage. It's not going to do too great against that, but I'm going to run that again. Hopefully I'll get a zone coverage and you can see how this route can get open. Just as a little check down. It's not a huge play, but obviously it's something that's still there. Uh, but every other route is going to be pretty much good against man, including the um, the X route, which I really didn't show. So I'll go to motion this guy across. I'll do that again. Like I said, if I'm going to run it like this, I can do double drags if I know it's man coverage. But if I think it might be a zone coverage, it's going to be best to have something to pull back those safeties. And then, like I said, this X receiver here gets open the exact same way against man or zone as I really just have to read the crossing routes from front to back. So finally through the dink and dunk pass plays for the most part, but a lot of the plays I'm going to show you from here on out do have dink and dunk capabilities as well as one play touchdowns. One of my favorite for dinking and dunking is going to be the shark halfback wheel. So let's go and let's pick that and I'll continue to pick random. This is one of my go-to plays here and it's mostly for this running back here, which is going to get open against just about any man or zone if you throw it quickly. I notice sometimes though you get that jumping animation it's not always but it feels like EA tried to nerf this a little bit where it's gonna be best if I get that catch and run animation you can see right there that was a man coverage with the man cornerback or safety really far behind and that's gonna allow me to get more you can see here once again I got man coverage like I said I don't want that jumping catch animation I want that smooth catch and run animation to get as much as I can and you also have the option to motion them out if you think that this is the way to go you can see here it actually didn't really help out too much when it comes to the man coverage because now the man coverage is the line but it does help when he goes up the field this play also has a lot of one play touchdown capabilities so let's go and let's pick that and we'll start off with cover two tampa two against cover two you can run it from a hash mark to the short side of the field and this route here will get wide open partially because of the way that the uh the the double post is uh designed the cornerback's really gonna just like jam that or just try to like prioritize that you can see how wide open this guy gets for a big play i mean if i have a really fast running back it might be able to be gone but i find it runs from the open side as well i find that running this from a hash mark like i am here is really just to shorten the route you can see how it kind of like runs into the sideline and shortens it but you can have that exact same effect if you run from a hash mark to the open side of the field and augment the route before you motion it so if i just go with a regular uh good old-fashioned wheel route just shorten that then I, now I have an opportunity to do the exact same thing. Although I feel like it doesn't take as long to turn up the field and you can see how you can have more of a dramatic, um, even though he ran into the guy, he has a better angle for the one play touchdown. And it was still worked out, even though, like I said, he ran into him. 
This play can also have a lot of success against cover two man, so let's go and let's pick that. Now against cover two man, you want it to be the exact opposite. You want to motion this guy out, but you don't want the shorter version because that one won't get open. So I'm going to motion this guy, I'm going to put the A route on the streak because I just want to pull back the safety for as much catch and run space as possible. And you can see that this guy gets open underneath that based off the fact that the running back is running such an elongated route. He's actually trying to press it. So that there actually ran into uh, the sideline, which is why that play stopped. But like I said, you can see it's that press animation that he's trying to get that's really costing it. And you can see him also running out of the out of the you know out of the back of the uh, or running out of the sideline. So I'm actually gonna shorten that route, just run it from a hash mark like this. And you'll see how now it's gonna shorten that to the point where it's actually gonna be more effective. So like I said, on the hash mark, he'll try to press one more time, and he's way gone. Although that's not necessarily going to be a one play touchdown from the short side, it's just gonna be a very good play. This play also has a lot of success since things like man cover one, so let's go and pick that. I'm gonna attack the wheel route once again, but I find it's best to motion this guy across because it's gonna pull that cornerback in that direction, and it's also gonna pull the safety in that direction pre-snap. So basically now he's so far away that this I'm gonna have a one-on-one -on -one with this particular um, you know, the running back underneath. So I'll go ahead and I'll fade the Y route too, just to try to pull that guy back. But you can see how once this running back turns up field, there's nobody over here now. I mean, it's just a sprint to the end zone as he completely toasts his uh, linebacker or uh, safety or whoever in coverage. And you can see how glitchy this route is because once he turns up field, he just smokes whoever's in coverage. Nobody has the ability to make that angle as he's just trying to beat him to the sideline and then he just gets toasted up field. And at that point, it's just a sprint to the end zone. Play also has a lot of success against things like cover Cover three, so let's go and let's pick that. This play might be best against cover three. It's probably one of the most unique in the formation. All you gotta do is run from a hash mark to the open side of the field like I am here. Most of this receiver across, put the Y and A receivers on streaks. I can block the running back if I need to, because I probably will with the, you know, the, the beast Chris Jones right there. But uh, you can see how the B receiver can get open wide open to the other side. Cover three is one of the harder defenses to hit a one play touchdown against, which is one of the reasons I like this play so much is because it gets so wide open. You can see why this play here is so successful because that safety can't commit because of the streak. He's all by himself. He basically has to cover two guys and he will eventually have to commit to the streak, which is when you're gonna wanna bullet and pass lead to all this space. There's nothing over here for another easy wide open one play touchdown. So that's pretty much it for that play. I also have a very good play out of the flood, which is basically gonna be a man beating concept let's go let's pick that on defense we're going to pick uh, cover zero this play is specifically a man coverage play for man cover one man cover zero where if you motion this guy across the wide receiver is going to have outside leverage with no help so this is really the look i'm looking for this receiver or this cornerback here just he's basically just like shaded inside so if i check release the running back and just wait for quez to get outside a little bit it should be an opportunity for an easy catch and run one play touchdown up the sideline as long as i can get it out with good timing and if i watch the route you can see he's got outside leverage out the gate so it's not really much to it the second he gets outside or makes that cut you can see I'm already loading up and we're bullet and pass leading away to the point where it's just an easy catch and run as long as I can out sprint the defender. I only really have two more one play touchdown plays and the PA read is one of them. So let's go and let's pick that. This one here is probably one of the best. We're going to start off with cover two once again. All you really got to do is motion this guy across and put the Y and X route on fades. And this should look very familiar because this is something that I put out in the past. This is something I put out from the gun normal. Uh, I think it was the gun normal. I really forget, but it was the last formation that I was using. So all I really got to do after that is put the A route on a 10-yard out route, and you'll see how that'll pull the safeties apart enough that the B receiver just gets open right over the middle uh, for a very easy one-play touchdown, just as long as I didn't have a bad throw, because you can see the pressure was there. So I'll go ahead and I'll do that one more time. I'm running from the center hash, but it really doesn't matter, and I'm fading the X and Y route. I'm not putting them on streaks. I'm putting them on fades, because that makes a little bit of a difference. I'll block the running back this time to complete the setup, and you'll see how this will just make it that much easier now that I got a little bit more pass pro, as this guy gets open right over the middle for about as easy one play touchdown as you're going to find. This play can also have a lot of success against things like cover three. So let's go and let's pick cover three sky. For cover three, you just want to make sure that you have, um, you know, you're going to run from a hash mark like I am here. And I'm going to put the running back on a wheel instead of uh, just blocking them. And I'm going to put the other two receivers on fades once again. I'm also going to leave the tight end where he is on that zig because that's going to help to keep that cornerback down, which is what I want. As I really just have to bullet and pass lead away once he gets in the, inside the safety. And you can see I can get an easy one play touchdown that way. 
This is another unique concept. You can see the three receivers on this side is what the, starts the safety out on this side instead of the center of the field over the ball like it typically does. And then the streaks will pull that safety back to the point where he can't really commit. So basically, once I get inside here, I'm just bullet and passing away. I mean, I'm past that cornerback already, even though he's turning around and sprinting. All I really have to do is wait for him to get inside that safety just a little bit, and then I get a very dramatic bullet and pass lead away from him. And it's a very easy one play touchdown against cover three. But it's also not the only one play touchdown this play is capable of. All I have to do is put the running back on a wheel and then motion him over and you'll see how this play here can be a very big play. I'm gonna put the wide receiver on a slant as well, but the running back is gonna be the play. The running back is gonna get man-matched extremely late by the quarter flat, and that's gonna allow this running back to get a throwing window right over the top of the cover three corner. Wheel routes are very good against man coverage, but not a lot of people know how good they are against zone coverage in this look. As you'll see that this cornerback above me will man match the corner route or the post route to the receivers running there, allowing this guy to get wide open outside once you bullet and pass it away from the cornerback for another easy catch and run one play touchdown. Now this play can also have a lot of success against cover four regulars, so let's go and let's pick that. So last play, this is probably the most diverse, and that's the PAD bout. So let's go and let's pick that. We'll continue with cover two, although I'm gonna back out and go to regular nickel cover two. No real adjustments needed here. You just want to motion this guy across and put him on a fade. And that's pretty much it. The B route's going to pull apart the safety anyway. You just need somebody to pull that safety back. And you can see how this is just an easy one play touchdown right over the middle. Although you have other options. You can do a couple different things with this look. But it's going to be best if you motion across the Y route, put the B route on a streak, and try to focus on the Y route instead. I'm going to block the running back, although I just actually hiked the ball and I forgot to do that. But you can see how this is going to take a perfect angle to basically create space between the safety and the cornerback for another at least very big play. Also can have a lot of success against cover two man, so let's go and let's pick that. Pretty much the same setup, just motion this guy across and put the tight end on a streak. That's all you really gotta do. And you're gonna notice how the wide receiver will eventually get outside as long as you throw it with good timing for another big play. Where this play really excels though is something I haven't touched on much, it's cover four. So let's go and let's pick that. We'll go and we'll pick cover four match. For cover four, you just wanna run it from a hash mark to the open side of the field, motion out this running back and put him on a fade. And since I already have four routes that are over 10 yards, this is gonna put the uh, the safety in conflict as he's not really gonna know who to cover. And you're basically just gonna get a wide open streak to the running back because the way that they man match just basically leaves him wide open. And this might be the biggest glitch in the formation. As you can see, the running back here never even gets recognized by the safety and coverage as he just lets him run right past him for an easy one play touchdown right over the top. But this play also has a lot of success against regular cover four, so let's go ahead and let's go to that as well. Pick cover four, drop contain. There's a couple different ways to do it, one of which is just motioning across his tight end and putting him on a fade. And as long as I run it from a hash mark like I am here, you're gonna see how I gotta buy a little time in the pocket, but I got plenty of blocking as cover four pass rushes suck. But once he gets inside that safety, it's just an easy and bullet pass lead away, and he gets open underneath as that safety is more concerned with the streak. So I'm gonna go ahead and end the video there. If you guys wanna see more breakdowns of full offenses like this, like I said, I got a lot more in my custom ebook, but if you want to see more on YouTube every Friday, please make sure to be a subscriber. Hit the like button, let me know in the comment section. Other than that, thanks for watching, man. My shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my bids and more. Link in the description below.